in a cowboy state or the equality state, if we choose one or the other, we seem, it seems that someone worthy got dumped. Half of the population got dumped as we went for one or the other. So the solution is obviously to merge them under a different term that honors both of them. And I'm happy to say that for reasons I cannot even understand, a lot of a week or two ago, a noun that I have never taken seriously or thought about, but it suddenly came into my mind as a really great noun. And so I started looking at, at dictionary definitions of it, and that noun is gumption. <laughs> gumption, when you go, uh, there's of course 50 million dictionaries on the web, and so they help us out with this. Gumption, one, boldness of enterprise or initiative. Two, guts, guts or spunk. And three, common sense. And then most of the dictionaries, this is a little bit common, but most of the dictionaries then say that that third definition, common sense, is now obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> to use the past to reclaim the future, that is the, the topic tonight. And the key strategy, I think, is to recognize relation and connection between things that we have gone, gotten accustomed to considering separate and disconnected. And in some ways it was history that led us to think these things were separate and disconnected. But in fact, it is our great opportunity today to reconnect them, and I think this organization is particularly positioned to do that reconnecting. Last 50 years, maybe the last 100 years, which I think historians of the future will call the something like the era of improbable and witless comfort. <laughs> they lived in a state of extraordinary material ease, but they didn't know where it came from. And they assumed that it would just keep going. That resources that they wanted, whether that was electricity, whether that was water, whether that was food, that would just come. And it would come in an affordable form and it would Wherever it was produced, that was not their concern. So that era of extraordinary witlessness, the disconnection between consumption and production, that has to change. So the best thing that could happen for everyone uh, in Wyoming, but also the whole nation, is to reconnect production and consumption. And here I'm back to my theme, to take two things that have been separated and to bring them back together. Okay, so there are lots of things we have treated as opposites besides production and consumption. It is so an issue tonight and so much um, before me with these founders of the organization. That is the frequent pattern in interpreting the American West, its history and its present and its future, in a opposed pair of categories, individualism on one side and cooperation on the other. And those are often well, those are almost always cast as if they were opposites, as if they were incompatible and really wanted nothing to do with each other. But this organization is the best evidence that you can have strong individuals and strong collaboration. And to create those as opposites and to police a border between them is, is um, unrealistic as it begin to get at it. And yet, it is important as an historian, I am obligated to say that not just in Wyoming, not just in the American West, but over the last 200 years of American history, if you ask what became of agriculture's central, primary, dominant position in the American nation, why did that erode? Why did that contract? Well, one answer, by no means the only answer, but one answer is the sense of individualism and independence in farmers and ranchers. They are a hard group in many circumstances to bring together. I have a wonderful husband whose name is Houston. Unless I was getting ready for this trip, I said to Houston, you know that phrase, powder river letter buck? He said, no we don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me explain it to you. And I gave it a good shot trying to explain what that meant. But I think what it seems to me is that if you are expecting life to be calm and predictable, Powder River is probably not the place to be. <laughs> its history is, there's nothing there that is in a calm and predictable mode. Um, Indian conflict, the fur trade, the overland trail, the railroad, the cattle boom, the energy boom, there's nothing there that says 
Well, now it's all calmed down. The unsettled ideas in terms of property, who owns a beaver, who owns a beaver stream, keeping track of cattle ownership in the open range era, the water issues, subsurface minerals, this is not a place for the people who wanted it to be to be calm um, and predictable. So Powder River Letter Buck has to mean that. It has to mean this is the place where you could cotton fair one. It's been a pleasure and it continues to be an inspiration to have this time in this company of leading citizens of the Gumption State, <laughs> citizens who have put 37 years into the project of not letting common sense become obsolete. Powder River, letter book.